Okay, so we'll start in a second. I just need a final piece of equipment. But uh, in order not to let you wait, I'll start a warm up. So um, we're very happy to be here in, in front of you. Uh, we are. Is it, oh. We found the clicker. Uh huh. Okay. Good to have a banker with you. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we had this uh, presentation uh, just over a week ago in Berlin. Uh, and uh, that is a kind of a problem because oral jokes were for foreign markets, so it will not fly here. But anyway, uh, we'll try to, to, to go straight to the topic. And, uh, you know, they say that it's, it's very hard to be a prophet in your own village, but we can try. We'll try. <laughs> we'll try. So, anyhow, um, I come from Saga as uh, I was announced, and uh, my dear uh, uh, customer and colleague comes from Raiffeisen. And about a year ago, we had some you know, conversation about uh, what can we do new and uh, how to, to, let's say, go into this digital way that everybody's talking about. And um, in, th in those um, conversations, we came up with the idea about to, to make a chatbot. Uh, just uh, guys from marketing call me, this is called activation. So if you remember the answer to the question I'm just showing, and you go to our booth afterwards that we have out there, we have some cool presents for you. But uh, this, should, this should also be a motivation for you to pay closer attention to my presentation. But anyhow, um, so about a year ago, uh, we first set out to figure out what we want to do. And you know, in the, in Weaver is a, platform made by, by Saga and uh, colleagues from Raiffeisen are very kind to be inventive and to think of Rea, which actually has a meaning, which is Raiffeisen Electronic Assistant. And we set out to make Rea not a technological gimmick. Uh, it was never intended to improve Raiffeisen's uh, digital credentials or, or to be a marketing ploy. We really actually e envision that uh, Rea will be a hard-working colleague in a call center. So of all the places where we could have put it in a, in a bank, Raiffeisen said, OK, call center is something that is really, really important for us because this is the, one of the first uh, touches with the customers and that there is a lot of stuff that we can improve there. And you know, your typical uh, call center has a pretty much problems that persist for, for decades. Um, you are as fast as your uh, operators. You can only have so many of them. You can keep only so many of them during the off hours. Uh, and uh, actually, call center is a single channel. You call with your phone and you talk to the person, maybe some chats, but it's really limited choice in number of channels. And then it comes down to very repetitive work because most of the question coming to the call center is actually usually the same. Um, so you don't get very excited if you're operator there. So we figure out with a chatbot we can solve these issues because uh, when Rea answers to the customer, it's few milliseconds, it's under the second that that, that question uh, gets answered. Uh, you have a 24/7 working hours, 365. Rea is always there, always answering, so you don't have a problem with number of people working. And then uh, we can pretty much put it on any channel. Right now we have eight channels. Uh, we started with the Facebook Messenger and, and Viber because uh, Viber actually back in Berlin took a lot of explanation what the Viber is because everybody else is on, on different messaging platform. But uh, we are all really excited that WhatsApp is kind of uh, letting us use the API pretty soon. So WhatsApp will be up and running and, and a few other things. But pretty much any messaging platform is something that we can use. And also, when we're talking about messaging platform, uh, there is a thing that your customers, or you, if you are a customer, you are already on messaging platform. So uh, you want to be where your customer is. It's not a huge wisdom. So actually using a messaging platform that your customers are already on and, and, and talking to their families or talking to their friends, if you are just another channel, actually makes you closer to the customer, makes you uh, uh, just one step uh, in front of maybe your competition. And then finally, um, Rea really automates the process, which should give uh, a better quality uh, of the answer. So uh, the next thing is how, how did we uh, go about doing this? 
So we are very thankful to, to guys from call center in Raiffeisen because they really took up uh, Rea as one of their own. It was never a, a matter of competition. Uh, she was never somebody who's going to steal something from them. She was always perceived as one of them. And they really nurtured her, trained her, um, really gave her legs that she can perform what she's doing now already for nine or 10 months. And, and that was, I think, maybe even crucial with all the uh, technological stuff, uh, business stuff, is this buy-in from the call center stuff that uh, they need to uh, develop her. And uh, actually, it was them who came to us with some 50-ish uh, scenarios that are the most frequent questions that uh, they usually answer uh, on the phone. And, you know, interesting thing happened. People are not very rational. We know all of that. So. Uh, these 50 scenarios very quickly went to 70 because uh, there was, for example, a kid who would come and uh, at the beginning of his shift, he was supposed to train Rea to do certain things. And he would come and type in, what's the weather? And he would do that every day. And of course, he would get the answer, sorry, I'm not trained to give you this answer, please rephrase your question. And uh, our guys noticed that there is a question that is always faulted, no, there is never answer to it. So our team, you know, created the answer, kid comes to work, what's the weather, and there's the answer. And the guy jumps and says, it's alive. Uh, so this is a real true story. And then we realized that this will help people communicate. So these 20 scenarios, we went into um, how are you doing? Are you available for date? Actually, there was a lot of questions about date. My favorite question came from the guy who said how many eggs I should have for breakfast. I actually wanted to meet the guy, but you know, GDPR and all this, this stuff, but that's my, my favorite customer of Raiffeisen. Uh, anyhow, giving emotion to Rhea and making her more human in that way because we give her more uh, depth uh, is, was very, very important for uh, actually getting what we got. And uh, results for first um, nine, nine months, actually, yeah, this is nine months, this is before October, are, are quite good because uh, she managed to handle over 300,000 conversations in these uh, nine months. And actually what happened is that in the beginning, uh, in January, where we had 130,000 conversations to start with, uh, honestly, 90 plus percent were about nothing or non-banking conversations. People were just trying her out. But as time progresses, and now in September, if you just look at month of September, 40% uh, of conversations are about uh, banking topics. Admittedly, number of conversations coming down, but more and more people are actually using it for what is she's supposed to be used. And your usual questions are about product, uh, checking account balance. Actually, we have a, a statistics that says that First question is how to block the card when it's stolen. Second question is about ATM and, and branch availability nearby, working hours and so on. And then there's a, several versions of uh, questions about product, credit cards, loan, and, and so on. But people are perceiving Rea as somebody who can give the valuable information. That's very, very important uh, for us. Uh, so what... Uh, what were the results or, or why we think we got these results? Definitely, uh, there is a technical story to it. Uh, uh, we actually use uh, NLP that is uh, Google-based in a sense that Google has a lot of uh, available uh, words in, in their dictionary. But if you, any of you try to use Google Translate, it doesn't really look human. So our guys uh, with a lot of algorithms, machine learning, uh, tools managed to get uh, this language to, to be uh, natural. And uh, they, they worked in, in, in a lot of ways to, to smoothen out the language uh, to, that, so that you perceive that there is somebody who can actually talk to you as a, another human. So for example, if you type, I want a meeting for a car loan uh, on, on Wednesday uh, on Dedinje, uh, and you get the answer, then you figure out, uh, I want it to be Thursday. This is called context switch. And Rea will not go back and ask you where and about what. She will know that just to switch the context regarding time and again give you the appointment. Or if you say, I want a meeting for a mortgage uh, on Dedinje, she will know that she's missing a piece of information needed to complete the task. So this is called context fill, and she will ask, what time do you want to have a meeting? So th those are things that we do very easy when we talk to each other, but you can understand that when you get the machine to do something like that, it's not so easy. And then 
typos is something that we fix very easy. Uh, what turns turn out to be a very uh, important thing for us, uh, getting Rea to talk Serbian because she talks Serbian and English, uh, help us um, work with a lot of small languages. So it turns out that right now we did so far proof of concept in uh, Albanian, Armenian, Lithuanian, Ar uh, Arabic. So we became almost like expert for for uh, small languages, uh, and that is you can understand a uh, source of competitive advantage out there in, in a big world where most of the available chatbots speak big languages. And then uh, uh, there's one really important thing. Uh, uh, Raiffeisen Bank was always a big partner for us in this, in this project. Um, it was really up to them to, to create the old creatives and marketing tools and marketing plan and communication plan. We were really a technological guy who, who were thinking about, you know, this needs to work and let's get it to work. But it was them who went out to the white world and, and, and said, okay, this exists and they made a really nice press conference. And uh, one thing that kind of really set things apart was this uh, Viber uh, sticker campaign with, that brought number of followers up to 150,000. Uh, what is really important, uh, this 150,000 plus in January went down to 134, I believe, as of yesterday, but we still have a really, really important uh, and, and big number of uh, followers out there. So all of this was like a really partner project where it was them who knew the business and them who knew how to talk to the customers, and we were technology guys who provided what they, pretty much what they uh, asked for. So at this point, I hand over to, to my colleague to tell you the story about their view of this project. Yeah, so hello from my side as well. Nevusha as well, uh, accidentally. Um, basically, you've heard now the side of the story from our vendor. Uh, I would like to give you a user perspective. Uh, Good thing about us being in Berlin last uh, week is that we had a chance for it to do this kind of presentation. So this is, uh, we had a rehearsal. The bad thing is that Nebisha heard part of my story, so I will have very little to tell you. He's already stolen half of my uh, material. But anyhow, um, I think uh, introduction, uh, further introduction is maybe not even necessary. Uh, just to say Raiffeisen Bank, uh, Serbia is... Uh, the first bank in, um, in our group, actually, that launched a uh, chatbot solution based on the artificial intelligence. Uh, we're part of the Raiffeisen Bank International, as I think most of you may already know. Um, you know that artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, has been a topic, has been a buzz for the past, I think, I don't know, four or five years. Uh, the bankers appear to be extremely hot about this topic. Uh, as we saw a lot of use cases, so from the back office automation, document management, uh, manipulation, collection management, uh, big data analytics, CRM, etc. And we too, you know, Raiffeisen Bank in Serbia started this discussion somewhere, I think, a year and a half ago and uh, started placing this chatbot, uh, artificial intelligence our strategic map. But we decided to actually go with something that provides custom with the most direct value, you know, back office automation of course, will increase the efficiencies, but you know, having a, a bot that is providing information real time, you know, 24/7, 365 days a year, is something that is, I believe, uh, of a significantly more direct value to a customer. And we decided then to actually have chatbot as the first use case uh, in our bank. And accidentally, again, I think Nebusha and, and his team approached us. We've been partnering with Saga for quite some years now, I think, since 2003. And uh, they approached us and they claimed they had a product which was like market ready. We didn't believe it at first, but we said, okay, let's try it. Let's run a proof of concept and see how far it takes us. And, you know, imagine being a banker nowadays in the digital transformation era, digital evolution era, especially responsible for digital banking. You're surrounded by a crowd, by a forest of, you know, technologies. Uh, they're being simply pushed at you and you have to pick up the best one out of them. You cannot take them all, obviously. Uh, so do you take chatbot at this stage or not? You know, do you wait for another two years and see if this uh, technology will survive throughout its cycle? But somehow we, 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 we trusted that this is something that is taking us further on into the future. 
and uh, we enter into a project which, uh, out of all projects that we manage here from the digital transformation arena, I think uh, this was probably the, the quickest and smoothest one. And I'm not making an advertisement for Saga. I was really kind of surprised myself. It took us uh, four to five months from day one to the market. And I think the critical factors there, and I should probably flip to the next slide, uh, are, are the uh, last two months. So the last two months were significant. Why? Um, we used um, our resources and Saga resources to train the bot. So when you kind of base your scenario, market scenario on 100 most used frequently asked questions in your contact center, uh, and you launch it, you want that Rare is able to answer them, you know, immediately. That not that every other question she answers with, I cannot understand this face. Sorry, please, could you try, try again? And I will try to answer. So this testing period was essential uh, for multiple reasons. Firstly, that we could fine tune the scenarios. Uh, secondly, uh, we launched it to our employees, so we ran this friends and family pilot, and this gave us significant insights. We started with 170 maybe at first, but we ended with 100 uh, scenarios which are pure bank related, but then we realized that our colleagues are not interested in, well, obviously banking products. Uh, a lot of them were interested in, in dating services that Rare may provide or not. Uh, now you see how sad the life of a common bank I may get, you know, but um, they were interested in the color of the eyes and dimensions and all sort of things, you know, weather, you know. Um, then we decided that we will focus our attention towards the end on a small talk, and we developed a couple of scenarios, a couple of jokes, uh, dozens of them, I think we ended up with maybe 30 uh, paths, which happened to be very, very, very appreciated by the customers who were the first ones to test trap. Uh, second thing which I would mention was kind of critical to make Rare a local success is uh, the marketing efforts. See, when we started a year ago, a um, year and a half ago doing research, uh, in the banking arena, there were mo maybe four to five names of banks who were announcing publicly that they have a chatbot in use. Uh, doing the research recently, before Berlin, two weeks ago, we came up uh, with the notion that the number of uh, chatbots is increasing. And they all have um, something in common. I will actually, I will need to read this out. So, so today we have Erica, we have Nora, and then we have Dory, then we have Ada, then Amelia, Ali, Coin, we have Rhea. So we have some male names as well, Wells, Harrow, you know. So what they have in common, all of them, is um, a short name for a person, right? What is so particular about Rare. We wanted to give Rare face. You know, we wanted to give her features. We wanted her to talk. Um, so we even designed a 3D animated video where Rare is actually addressing uh, you, you know, presenting to you, etc. Uh, and this was uh, very good because it attracted a lot of attention from our local press. We had a, an excellent press conference. I think there was no news agent that uh, didn't want to publish uh, the article on Rare and, and the utilization of artificial intelligence in banking. And this, this gave Rare a boost. So I think within three weeks, we had uh, 120,000 followers. Um, the sticker market on Viber channel helped a little bit. A lot of our kids were very interested in uh, downloading the stickers, and they were very keen on chatting with Rare, which didn't, let's say, make us bankers very happy, because we realized soon, as Nebusha said, that 95%, I think, of the questions were totally non-bank related. Only 5% were bank related. And we were afraid this was the status to stay. However, this changed over the time. Now, I can say uh, nine months later, we have a situation where 40% of the questions are bank related. So, Rea is now providing banking services, which she was meant to do in the very beginning. Um, what is very important to also uh, mention is that Rare has managed over the course of the nine months to handle approximately 350,000 conversations. And you may say 350,000 is relatively high or low number, but uh, whomever of you is uh, coming from a bank, um, you would know that in order to, let's say, handle 350,000 calls in your contact center, you would probably need to deploy uh, an army of contact center operators. 
So you see the efficiencies that uh, you actually may reach uh, using chatbot uh, servicing your customers. Uh, in order for this story to keep on, uh, let's say, remaining successful, um, chatbot needs to be updated. It has to bring some new things, new features. And we already have a couple of things on our roadmap. And I will now share them with you. So we believe that for those customers who onboarded to RAC and, and who trust that RAC can deliver them personal information, such as uh, bank account, um, those customers may be as well willing to purchase products using RAC. So without coming to the branch, doing it from home. And this is the direction we want to go into. So personalized offers with end-to-end -end sales processes. Uh, furthermore, uh, RAIA is to perform payment operations. So we know that all of you are using mobile banking, internet banking apps, and clearly you can use these apps to convey such transactions. But it's significantly more convenient, and there is a part of the population, younger population, that will not use mobile banking apps. They will use Viber, they will use Messenger to do this. So we want to take advantage of, of this channel to actually provide also peer-to-peer -peer transfers of money, et cetera, et cetera. But a more needs to grow into new channels. So web uh, side of the bank is the, the first one to target. Uh, furthermore, we expect also from uh, WhatsApp some good news. WhatsApp was quite closed for, for a long time now to the chatbot, chatbot technologies. But I think Saga is in a process of closing a deal, I think, by the end of the year. Let's cross the thing, keep the fingers crossed. Furthermore, client segmentation. Now, now Rea is using neutral language to talk to the customers, but some customers do not like the uh, Z form. You know, they, 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 they want to be addressed differently. So uh, she should be able over time to distinguish between, between the youth and, let's say, I don't know, elderly premium customer. And finally, uh, what we've been listening to in um, Berlin, now on the chatbot summit, a lot uh, is the voice. I mean, voice is the new thing to come. Uh, a lot of experts from Amazon, Facebook claim that text is uh, just a period, you know, it's a period that will end probably within the next two to three years, maximum five, and voice will replace this. So the idea is that you will not be typing up using your mobile phone, but you'll be talking to your mobile phone and you will be talk. you already can talk now to, you know, smart sound speakers. Um, so, the idea is that chatbot will be able to understand you talking to it, but also that the chatbot will be able to answer you in your mother tongue. So, that's uh, as far as the plans are concerned. That is pretty much everything uh, I wanted to share with you. In case you have any questions for me or my imenyak, there is no English word for it, I believe. Namesake. namesake. Is there? Namesake. Ah, namesake. Okay. Please feel free. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so uh, Vedran uh, has a question. Uh, which were the success metrics that you used when you started developing RIA? Do you want to so kick off? Yeah, I can, I can try. Uh, well, actually, it is friends and family. Uh, first was natural language processing in a sense that uh, it was very important that uh, we get people to actually talk to her and uh, actually, one of the important metrics for any chatbot is the number of exchanges, so how many times you actually go back and forth with, uh, with the chatbot, and let's say four to five is, is pretty, pretty good. So, for example, where is nearest ATM, give me a location, I send a location, um, I send the address and the map, that will be one successful conversation, so the, the, this number of exchanges uh, was a parameter. Uh, second and a very important thing after NLP is intent because in, in language for a human to figure out intent is very simple but for machine to figure out what is the intent is uh, also very important so let's say in the beginning for friends and family it was more of this technical part that we were trying to solve but then later on we actually focused on this uh, emotion and, and getting people to feel comfortable talking uh, talking to Rhea because as I said, humans are not just rational. They want to have a conversation with somebody who's like them, and we are all a bit irrational. Maybe just an add-on. I think we, we, we mentioned that throughout the presentation, but the re number of relevant questions for in the, in the banking uh, area, this is one KPI that I would add to that. And we were also measuring how many times a client actually decides 
that he's diverted to an agent. So that was for us important. And I can even share this statistic, the only 5% of the cases. So in the rest of the cases, I declined, did not get an answer, or in most of the cases, uh, Rhea handled the entire conversation from the beginning to an end. Yeah, maybe, maybe we need to explain that uh, actually, uh, the call center was always involved in, in, in the back and, and available so that if Rhea cannot answer the question, we offer availability of, of agent. And in the 5% of the situations, actually it came down to uh, agent answering. It will be kind of seamless to the, to the customer because he will stay on the same channel, like typing in his Viber and, and uh, in a call center, in, uh, because if he did integration with uh, the call center software, the, the operator will get the last 10 exchanges and, and see what was the topic of conversation and uh, it will be uh, capable of taking over. But uh, we were actually trying to uh, avoid this as much as possible and having only 5% was quite a success. Thank you very much, we're out of time. Thank you for your presentation. Thanks. Good luck with your attention. Bye -bye.